this is where the Sutton Locomotive Works model does start to edge even further away from the Backman model. Hi there, welcome back to the channel. I'm Jennifer Kirk and we're up here on Weir Yard. It's really great to see you. I hope I find you well. And today we're really lucky that thanks to the very kind loan from one of the Patreons, Dale, better known to some of you on the Monday Club as uh, Garthian, we're able to compare a Sutton Locomotives Workshop Class 24 with the all new tooled Backman 24-1, which I reviewed a couple of weeks ago and was actually mightily impressed with it. Now, once I did that review, a lot of you asked me to compare it to the SLW version. Now, I didn't have one of these, but Garthian very, very generously, when we uh, went to a socially distanced day out at Statfold Barn Railway, which uh, we did put out a video on. He very kindly lent me one of these models uh, from his own locomotive stable to enable me to do this comparison. So I'm really, really grateful for that loan. And also don't forget that today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, who support the channel and they are makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. But I'm really looking forward to bringing you this comparison. Now I have checked with Backman and the 24-1 that uh, came from them earlier this year is totally retooled. It owes nothing in its heritage from the original 24-0 model that came out nearly 20 years ago. So this should be considered a completely from scratch model. And they were quite keen to point that out because they're rightly proud of the work that they've put into this model. But come with me, I'm really looking forward to showing you these two models side by side. <laughs> So we already reviewed the Bankman Class 24 one and I've got it back here. This is the model that I picked up brand new through the affiliate links that you see in the description box down below. I was really impressed with this model and if you want to go back and take a look at that review you'll see just some of the features that I felt really brought this model up to code compared with the earlier 24.0 that they did nearly 20 years ago. There are so many differences that I'm not really going to go into them in this video between these two, but suffice to say that the Backman 24-1 model really is a quantum leap over that. Now I'm just going to put that to one side and I'm going to bring in the model that uh, Garthian lent us. And really from the outset you can see that the Sutton's Locomotive Workshop box itself is a work of art. It's a metal tin. Uh, it reminds me actually of some of the really fancy packaging that sometimes you get bottles of uh, really expensive whiskey in. Uh, but we've got the embossed logo on there, the SLW. Now I've heard a lot of people describe it as Sutton's Locomotive Works, but actually it does say workshop on there. And that clips off. It does have a positive location into there. I'm not quite sure what the the big cutout in the top is for. It doesn't actually come out. Uh, it might have been nice actually to have a, a recess that the paperwork could go into, but it doesn't. And this is the all singing, all dancing, uh, sound and stay alive fitted version. So you can see there we've got all of the details on the sound. Now I have had this running and I can say it really is impressive sound wise. Now my Bankman Class 24 doesn't have sound, so we can't do any kind of comparison between the two. I believe that uh, Bankman on their previous 24.0 releases may have released a sound fitted version, but I don't have that uh, locomotive, so I can't do a comparison of the sound. As we delve deeper into this box, we do finally get to the model itself. And what immediately strikes me is that 
this is in here in what can only be described as it reminds me a lot of the um there was a, a series that came with a magazine of great british locomotives and it does remind me an awful lot of the way that those were presented uh, so the top just lifts off uh, the locomotive isn't actually fastened to the base um, and this is how it came but it comes with an actual presentation piece and um, there is underneath uh, some detailing I can see there's some head code discs in there I'm not going to disturb any of that because this is a loaner model and what's interesting is you can see there that's been routed into the plastic it's actually got versions for 00 and what I can only presume is P4 or EM in there. That is, there's some actual quite nice touches with this model. So I'm just looking down there. Yeah, that's on the narrower setting. So the locomotive is geared up very much for anybody who wants to go down the P4 modelling route. There is definitely space in those bogies to be able to pull them apart. And... Uh, this, interestingly enough, this is rail exclusive. I can pre only presume that this particular version, and there have been several different versions coming from the Sutton Locomotives Workshop, that this may have been produced as a tie-in for uh, Rail Magazine. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'm not really well versed on the Sutton Locomotive Workshop's output. I know that uh, it does appear to be the, the Class 24 that they focused on, at least initially. One of the areas, if we compare these, I'm going to, I got uh, complaints by people who got a little bit uh, triggered <laughs> that um, I didn't rest my locomotives on something on here. So I'm going to put down a, a little sheet of something there, just so it's not directly onto the, uh, the wooden surface. And I'm going to put these two side by side. And what I can see there is actually... Um, I couldn't really tell them apart, apart from the head code boxes. What has initially struck me, and I think that's the other way around. So let's just turn that round. Is that side by side, um, they, the, the Bankman model does really go for a really great stab at this. Um, in fact, I think that's probably a very unfair way of putting it. Bankman do kind of nail it. Now, the later Class 24 ones, in that the ones which survived, uh, got renumbered into the tops, into the BR Blue, did pick up a few modifications. And it is interesting to see that the Backman model does have all of this tooled up for the later cutouts underneath the kind of skirt effect, but also the plated over ladder recesses. Now, I've been told that if you buy one of these in a similar livery to this, then um, it does have the right detail differences. So I can't get quite like for like. And what it does strike me is that having these uh, skirts cut away, and I'm guessing that this was done for maintenance reasons on the real locomotives, it shows off this wealth of detail that Backman captured along the base here. And uh, I did highlight that in the review that we did of this model. One of the other areas that really uh, came to light for me was the wheel front profile faces. And you can see there, it's got the correct front profile, which of course there is replicated by the Sutton Locomotive Workshop as well. And if we go back to, uh, I'm just gonna put out, this is, a nearly 20 year old Backman model now you can see those front faces are just plain black and I believe it just used exactly the same wheels as a number of other locomotives certainly the class 25 and possibly even the class 20. Now Backman have done away with that uh, they have moved on and got the correct front profile on the wheels and even though they're largely hidden away as you can see in this shot it is noticeable, especially when these are running at a slow speed. So it's one of the areas that I was really impressed with the retool from Backman. Another area that really impressed me was the inside of the cabs. Now, I know a lot of people did comment in the video this, that one area that Backman have kind of fallen down on a little bit is not providing a driver figure inside there. The original 24O, uh, might just be able to see them in there. They all came with a single driver figure at the uh, at one end, 
and um, that was pretty much standard for the Backman models, uh, the, well, the older versions, but the newer one doesn't have a driver figure at all in there. And it does have some quite powerful cab lights as well, so you can light it up and see inside, and that was picked up on in the review. Now I'm looking to the Sutton Locomotive Works model, and actually, it doesn't have a crew in either. So actually neck and neck for that. But the Southern Locomotive Works model does have an incredibly detailed internal cab, just as the Backman one did. Um, if anything, I think it's safe to say that the, the windows on the Sutton Locomotive Works one do seem to be a little bit clearer I think that the Backman ones maybe got that kind of almost like a slight fishbowl effect down the sides and you get a much better view inside the cab. The side windows, they do look a little bit better to me on the, the Sutton Locomotive Workshop model, but not by a huge amount. One area though which did stand out for me is the plastic handrails on the Backman version. Now these are much improved over the, um, I'll just show you this side of this model and you can see it's already lost one. This was a real bugbear back in the day. These plastic handrails came off ever so easily and did seem to be very chunky and over scale. Now the new retooled model has uh, made them somewhat finer. They do seem to be a lot more robust so far, but the Sutton Locomotive Works have just gone completely down the metal option. And you can see they're not quite so much in your face. And I think that they do work better. But um, that said, um, it's again, it's tiny, tiny differences. When we look to the roofs, this was another area I was quite keen to look between these, this pair. Uh, I'm going to just see if I can get the light to just sit on these better. The blue one is actually very difficult to show under this light and get you to see the detail. Um, to my naked eye, I can see all the detail does largely line up, um, but for some reason with the reflection of the light, uh, the camera does appear to be struggling. I'm also going to bring in the original Backman model here and you can see the difference. It's a little bit cruder on the roof and the big area for me is this area here. It shows up probably best on the Sutton Locomotive Workshop model and it's this sort of roof silencer and exhaust and the new 24-1 Backman model has it. The Sutton Locomotive Workshop 24-0 has it but it's completely missing on the original Backman model. And notwithstanding that I'm not knowledgeable enough to know whether some locomotives did and some locomotives didn't, I suspect it's an element that is wrong on the original Backman 24.0. So it's nice to see that they have tooled that up. And it's one of the areas which I did highlight in the review. The um, Sutton Locomotive Workshop model, the actual finesse of the roof detail itself, I would say is on a par with each other, but it does edge ahead with these completely see-through grates, uh, both on the exhaust, which is just part of the moulding on the Backman model, and this other roof vent as well. You can actually see right down into the model. Uh, whereas on the Backman model, it is just a plastic um, recess, kind of uh, embossed plastic in the mould. The original 24-0 model as well, that's pretty much the same. Although um, the new 24-1 is slightly finer on the detail on those. The fan vent as well, um, I'd say they're about even across the three. Just bear in mind that with the different liveries, certain details really do come to the fore, which aren't necessarily better or worse. It's just they show up better or worse, depending on what colour they are painted in. Now, looking to the front faces, I've already shown you these. I think we get... Um, a pretty good run for the money from the 24-1. Of course, these won't be identical because this is a locomotive that's got the head code box, uh, looks to be also refurbed, um, so it's got a few detail differences. But overall, 
I think that um, both of them capture that kind of uh, uh, curve on the top of the cab where the roof comes down equally as well. And it's something that um, I can actually show the Sutton Locomotive Works model to the older Backman model and you can see instantly it's much flatter on the older Backman model. The radius of that curve is more pronounced there and these are probably a much better direct comparison. And then let's bring in the Backman model and you can see that that curve is reasonably matched between those two. So all in all I think that the Backman model and the Sutton Locomotive Workshop model are certainly evenly matched to the point where on the market at the moment from Backman you've got the 24-1 tooled to this standard but they haven't yet retooled the 24-0. Now I did ask Backman about this and uh, they're playing their cards very close to their chest as you might expect and uh, what they did say was that um, they did confirm that this is completely retooled. Um, it, it's a completely new model. There is nothing in this that is carried over from that original 24.0. Um, and they said that whilst there's no public plans, no immediate plans to retool this, uh, never say never. So I suspect it's on the cards. Um, it can't be too difficult to um, turn this into this and I would suspect that at the production stage given that this is a complete new tooled model it would be pretty sensible to be able to have slides in the tooling to be able to do at a later date the 24.0 and I think at that point because these uh, Backman models are much more widely available uh, I think you actually have to go straight direct to Sutton Locomotive Workshop for their version. Certainly, I've struggled to find it anywhere in, in the shops. Um, I think that Backman are going to edge it. And certainly, in my mind, I think the, both of these models are very even Stevens. I would rate them identically. Um, I think that they're both as good as each other. They are both really great locomotives. The sound and the stay alive that has come fitted as standard with the Sutton Locomotive Workshop model is great. And we're going to show some footage of that running and get some of that sound in action. Um, but it's not a fair comparison to say, oh, well, that's so much better than the Backman one, blah, de, blah, de, blah, because I don't have a factory sound fitted 24 to compare with it in any way. There are plenty of aftermarket options for sound fitting, which is not too difficult. Now, certainly the Backman model is 21 pin uh, decoder socket. I have not delved into the Sutton Locomotive Workshop model. As this is a loner, I am not going to mess about. So just so that you are aware, there won't be a DCC fitting guide for this one, um, but certainly there is a DCC fitting guide in association with Trainomatic, our channel supporters, for the 24 one if you go to the video for that. I've got them now on the track, and as you can see, the stance is both really good and uh, also those uh, battery and fuel tanks really do look good on both the models. And that was one of the areas that I highlighted on the Backman 24-1 model that they'd really upped the game. Another area that this lighting does show up quite well, as you can see those body side grills, the big one there behind the back-to-back -back cabs. I do feel that the Sutton Locomotive Workshop model slightly has a greater sense of depth behind that, but uh, saying that the Backman one is still pretty acceptable and uh, it, it does still give you a sense of the structure uh, that would be behind those, but I, I feel that the SLW one just slightly edges it on that. Now we're going to try running them now, so I'm just going to get my control, they're both DCC fitted and if you're looking for a DCC fitting guide for the Backman 24-1 uh, then do look to the review video that we did on this and uh, we did fit a Trainomatic 21 pin decoder in relatively easily. So we've got the 24-1 and uh, let's just give that some power. 
and it does pick up pretty well at low speeds. Slight notchiness, but that's pretty normal for a lot of models and running in, extended running in period, which this hasn't actually had, would certainly go some way to actually uh, alleviate some of that. There's a great deal of weight on these and its haulage capacity is really good and the running characteristics are very, very good. The Backman Type 2s were always a very, very good stellar performer and I've certainly been really pleased with this new version which has certainly carried on that mantle and indeed has uh, exceeded it ever so slightly as well in terms of haulage capacity. I will show you that you can turn the cab lights on and off uh, independently on the functions. But I'm going to go back now to the Sutton Locomotive Workshop model. And uh, this, of course, is full sound fitted. I'm going to give you a blast of that in a moment, but certainly first up. There's kind of a humming noise. I think that's to do with the, the motor, but you can see this is where the Sutton Locomotive Works model does start to edge even further away from the Backman model. The Backman model is good, but on that slow speed, it really, there's no hint of notchiness on the gearing. There's no ever so slight juddering. I'm just going to change directions. It does take a little while to register that I've uh, told it to go the other way. And I think that is something that you can reprogram. And this is uh, it's going to the right is slightly uphill to the left is slightly downhill, which can always be um, a bit of a revealer about the transmission on model locomotives. But certainly the Sutton Locomotive Workshop model is having no issues whatsoever at very, very low shunting speeds. It also has to be said uh, that with it being factory fitted with the stay alive, it does seem to really help that smoothness. Now, um, lighting wise, uh, funnily enough, it is actually synced with the sound. So when I turn the lights on and off, it sounds like the cab door slamming. Not sure that that particularly adds anything, but we're going to go now for the full startup. I'm going to press F1, and this is the sound on the Sutton Locomotive Works Class 24. What is actually interesting is that I'm now running it into the uh, Backman Class 24 and <laughs> I know people say, oh, do a tug of war, but um, it's unable to shift that Class 24 in the slightest. So I am curious, will that 24 push it away? Um, it will actually with comparative ease, which suggests to me that the haulage capacity of the Sutton Locomotive Workshop model is not quite as good as the Backman one. Certainly its uh, track holding ability uh, might struggle a bit. There's a lot better grip going on there. The fact that it can shove the Sutton Locomotive Works model up and down with impunity and yet the Sutton Locomotive Works uh, version doesn't even make it jiggle when it buffers up to it under power. Um, it does say to me that um, this very much has the edge on grip and hauling capabilities. At the time of recording, Backman only have their 24.1 in a high fidelity retooled version. The Class 25 retooled is on its way, 
and I would expect the 24-0 to appear shortly thereafter, even though Bankman have not officially announced this. At the present time, therefore, if you want a 24.0 and you want a high fidelity version, then the Sutton Locomotive Workshop model is definitely the one for you. In terms of price, the Sutton Locomotive Workshop model is very expensive. So if you can afford to wait and uh, price is very important to you, then I'd suggest perhaps hedging your bets and waiting for the retooled Bankman model that is almost inevitably going to come. Would I have both of these models on my layout? Well, yes, for the 24-1, definitely. I bought this model and I've been very pleased with it. For the Sutton Locomotive Workshop 24-0, yes, I think I would, but I suspect that I might think slightly longer and harder about it in terms of the extra cost. It is a great model and I don't really want to take anything away from it. And that sound is exquisite. I particularly like the way that some of the sounds are keyed to the speed of the locomotive, such that if you want to honk the horn, it has several different versions of the horn in terms of duration, and they are keyed into the speed of the locomotive. Other sounds too seem to be dependent on whether the locomotive is running, moving, or the speed that it is moving. And overall, I think that this SLW24 is an absolutely great package. But on terms of price, I think it might make me think a lot harder before I purchased one. That said, I can see myself purchasing one. And I'd like to extend a big, big thank you to Garthian for lending this model to allow this comparison to take place on the channel. So end verdict, definitely the new Batman model is a lot better, more refined than the older Backman model. But when compared to the Sutton Locomotive Workshop model, I would put both of these on a level pegging. I hope you found that video informative. Don't forget to tickle that like button. And sharing is caring. Share us on social media and let other people know about this video. You can also subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Ring that bell and you'll be the first to know about new videos next time they get put up. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you again. So until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, up here on Weir Yard, saying you stay safe and well, and happy modelling. Bye for now. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, oorail.co.uk, Tepic, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, Brian Smith, Brian and Dorothy Mudd, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Trish Bits. Sparky 107107, George Botterini, Andy Finch, Chris Moss, Robert Sears, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grant Line Products, Sam Yates, and Dale Williams. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.